The following is a rebroadcast of TV 50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. TV 50 Sport and the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Sandy Bowling Lanes and Windows. It's the Stoneham Cooperative Bank's Mixed Doubles Championship. Split it. Look at this. Yes! Oh, wow! <laughs> right in the oh. pocket. Oh, there was never a doubt about that one. Look at ball. And now your host for Gambleton Stars and Stripes, Doug Wild and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Sandy's Bowling Lanes for Candlepin Stars and Strikes as we wind down our 1986-87 season, and we wind it down with our final ladder of the year, which is mixed doubles. And uh, so far, it's been dominated by the team of Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner. Yes, they bowled super. Last uh, two weeks ago, it was Jackie Sterner who kind of carried the team. Last week, Steve Vadney did most of the marking. This week, Pat Pay, Pat Kerr. Uh, challengers uh, should be another exciting one. All right, let's meet the bowlers. First of all, there are the challengers right there. Our number three seeds, Pat Pay and Pat Kerr. Yeah, Pat Pay, of course, we mentioned a couple months ago he was on and strung four 400s in a row before losing to Billy Gover. Carries 120 on average. Pat Kerr from Merrimack, 105 average. Uh, first time on the show for Pat Kerr and coupled with a veteran like Pat Pay much like uh, Steve Vadney and uh, Jackie Sterner. Well, if you've watched the show the last two weeks, you've seen a lot of these two folks, but there's a look at them once again if you haven't. Jackie Sterner and Steve Vadney with two wins in a row. Yeah, Jackie struggled a little bit last week. Uh, the week before, she was superb, uh, so Steve's hoping she's going to come back this week strong, and uh, it should be real interesting to see this format go. All of it brought to you, of course, by the Stoneham Cooperative Bank. Pleased to have them with us for this ladder championship series. And we have $40 in the bonus ball contest coming up later in the show. We're going to get right to the match, though, with the first string right after these words. Don't go away. All right, here's where we are before we move into the bowling. Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner, our number five seeded team. Two weeks ago, they knocked off Rick Barrett and Lois Queen. And then last week, they beat John Petorsky and Carol Moran. So now they'll go for their third win in a row against our number three seeded team. And then, of course, next week, waiting in the wings, our number two seeds, Clarence Davis and Tony Marie Baldinelli. And the top seeded team, Gary Duffett and Carol Downey, that of course in the ladder championship match two weeks from today. But for right now, it's time for Pat Pay to step up on lane 32 and get this match started for us. Pat Pay and Pat Kerr teaming up. Ooh, well, 189. <laughs> An auspicious start for Pat Pay. To just to run down his last appearance for us uh, on a regular men's format. So he takes an eight in the first box. He started out with a win over John Burke, 418, 355. Then he met Mike Brutzis, 408, 376. Let's go back a little ways. I missed two matches. Rick Kajeki was his first victim, 416 to 373. Then Bob Mazer, 446, 356. Then John Burke, 418, 355. Mike Brutus, 408, 376, before losing to Billy Gover, 379, 337. Had quite a streak there, Pat Pay. And his very first appearance with us, which was back in January of 85, he also had a 400, a 428 against Scott Williams, who threw a 407 that day. Pat starts off with uh, 18 for two, and that brings up Steve Vadney. Well, this is nothing new for Steve. He's <laughs> been known for stringing together victories here on Stars and Strikes. This is the first time he's appeared in doubles competition. And uh, he's now run his overall record to 12-3. and three. That is more wins than anyone else. And Steve will probably wait to hit the button. And he does, but it'll be an 8-box. Steve.
Steve turns around as soon as he threw that one. He knew it was going to be off to the left. Nice ball there. Almost. All even after two. And now it'll be the ladies' turn. Making her first appearance on the show, Pat Kerr from Merrimack. Pat carries a 105 average. Pat Pay and Pat Kerr combined for a roll-off score of 1278. And of course, uh, 10 strings total, five each in singles competition. And that 1278 was good enough for third seed. However, it was only one pin more than Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner had in their combined score. They ended up in a tie for fourth and then eventually fifth after losing a one-string roll-off. So that one pin saved Pat Pay and Pat Kerr having to roll two extra matches just to get to this point. And of course, now we're moving up into the big money, and you start moving up into that those first three seeds, you guarantee yourself a pretty good paycheck uh, regardless of what you do. Jackie Sterner, oh, who had such a great week two weeks ago cooled off a little bit last week starts off with a 10 and a one pin lead for the team and Jackie will have a spare leave now on the 4-7 a couple of pieces of wood out front Jackie carrying that same average as Pat Kerr has at 105. And she covers that 4-7 for first mark of the match for both teams. Once again, Pat Pay. Pat altogether has seven wins on the program. He's seven and two. The only two guys to beat him were Lee Brown and then Bill Gover in that ladder championship match we were talking about. Ooh, slow start for the team of Pat Pay and Pat Kerr. Spread Eagle minus the seven pin. Scotch mixed doubles. If you haven't joined us the last few weeks, as you have probably picked up, the men start off the first and third games, and the women will start off the second. Bowl two consecutive boxes, then the partner comes up for the next two and fills the mark if they have any. Like Steve just did there with only a three. It's enough to grab a seven pin lead after four frames. Oh, watch out, just caught it. The key for Vadney and Sterner, their first two weeks on the show, was that they were able to get off to a quick lead. And uh, both weeks, the first week they led by 34 after the first string. Last week they led by 24. And uh, then good second strings just built on the lead and by the time it was the third string school was pretty much out. 7-8-9 with wood. But the two pieces are not together so it could cause a problem. Better off having them frozen. Mm. There, that's what happened. This piece of wood that's left on the deck did not move at all.
ten pin lead after six. Pat Kerr slipping off to the right. Pat from Merrimack. She and her husband Albert have five children, almost a spare there. Children Patricia, Rebecca, Albert Jr., Robin, Robin and Christopher. And uh, Pat works at the U.S. Postal Service. She came in second in the women's side of this roll off with a 613. Only one to beat her was Tony Marie Baldinelli with 627. And as we mentioned, each had a separate roll off, men and women. The highest score for the men was coupled with the sixth woman, sixth place woman. And then the total scores of both bowls was combined. And then that score determined how they were seated, one through six. The highest, of course, being number one seed. And again, Pat. Kerr and Pepe still looking for their first mark of the match. 70 through 8. Marianne Kelly, of course, working the big scoreboard for us during this Stoneham Cooperative Bank Mixed Doubles Championship. I'll bet they didn't tell Marianne when she became the assistant treasurer down at the bank that this would be part of her job. <laughs> there you see the combined roll-off score of Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner. And a nice spare for Jackie. One, three, and ten. Piece of wood in behind the three, which helped. It's a little heavy on the head pin, but the wood you saw, use it effectively to clear the ten pin. Good looking ball. Woo! Oh, boy. Well, it's uh, Jackie's turn again this week. That's right. They're, <laughs> they're <been> alternating. <laughs> Two weeks ago, Jackie was just unbelievable, and today, starting off the same way. Two weeks ago, she bowled 16, uh, 14 frames and had seven marks. And she's three for four so far this week. So important in this type of format is to get that first mark for the team up there. Seems to relax both bowlers. Don't forget, you bowl two boxes, and you have to wait for six frames before you get back up there again. And again, I mentioned two weeks ago, Scotch mixed doubles scores have a tendency to be lower, as you can see here. But long ways from over. To see a 400 triple in this format would be a really outstanding score. Oh, and there nice is a shot. great, great spare by Pat Pay, and one they really needed. A la Pat Pay a few weeks ago. 2 4 off the wall, coming over and clearing out the 6 and the 10. Fine shot. That'll help the team. And oh, there, there they needed that. Yeah. It's still just a 99 string, but it could have been a lot worse, and that's 20 very, very important pins for the team of Pat Pay and Pat Kerr. Steve Vadney now to fill a strike left by Jackie Sterner. Watch out! Oh, I thought he had them all. Boy, everything but the six. Six was never even touched. No problem there on the spare. And again, first game is so very important to Jackie Stern and Steve Vadney. They always grab the lead. Nice. Oh, mm. well, same shot that Pat Pay had just a few minutes ago. Two, four, six, and ten. But without the spare strike, the last box for Pat Pay. Right. Um, you, know, you look at another ten pins onto the lead. It'll still be over twenty. But well within range. Uh, One twenty-five for Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner. And once again, they jump to an early lead by 26 this time after one string. We'll be back with the second string of action here at Sandy's. Don't go away. Middle string here at Sandy's. Pretty good crowd on hand for this mixed doubles match. 
Next week in the semifinal match, of course, uh, whichever team survives this one, will go on to meet Clarence Davis and Tony Marie Baldinelli. Scott Lee, for the counter, please, Scott Lee. The team of Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner leading by 26 pins coming into this middle string. One, two, and seven. Yeah. Outside, yes. yes. That's the tough way on that particular shot. Made it look easy, though. That's Jackie's fifth mark. Make it her fourth mark. Fifth for the team. Pat Kerr looking for her first mark of the day. Sliding by, picking off the seven pin. Disappointing six for a start for Pat. Oh, got a little break there. It's got to be on the head pin now. Looks good going down. Oh boy. Wow. No luck. Oh, Steve Vadney comes up now to fill in that mark. And he will add to the lead. And he adds seven. Six, nine, and ten. Let's see what this wood decides to settle down or where it decides to settle down. Yes. yes. Nice. Using the wall. Drove the ball through the pin. It's lying down into the six and nine, and the six pin carries the ten. Wants the five to go here, but it's going to have another shot. Delicate. Wood in the five pin at the same time. Well, now he's got a piece of wood in behind. Same type of shot. The wood behind the five will kick forward. Didn't catch enough of it. Nice try. Take 10. Nine box for Steve, 51 through four. Pat Pay now coming up. And want to acknowledge a letter that we received not too long ago from Jerry Baker in Portsmouth. And Jerry represents uh, many people who have asked this question, both in person and on the telephone and through the mail. And uh, he was asking particularly about Roger Marku, who was with us several weeks back, and uh, asking about the fact that sometimes the bowlers, where they stand, move, they move over and they block the, uh, the view of the pins. And the, the question is always, well, why, why can't it be moved and so forth? And the, the simple answer to that is, and I want to address this because we've been asked by so many different people, and that is there, there are so few bowlers who actually stand to that extreme side of the lane and actually block the, the view that it, it wouldn't make sense to move things for the, the one or two occasional bowlers who do it. And uh, in the limited space that we have available, it's uh, uh, almost impossible to do so right, anyway. Right, but so uh, that is the reason. Uh, it only happens once in a while because only an occasional bowler has that extreme uh, approach off to one side that uh, stands in front of the camera. In any event, now that we've solved that, <laughs> Pat Pay with a spare up in the fourth, and Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner still hanging on to the lead, and we'll be back with more after these messages. Jackie Sterner. Hey Jackie, let's have a big one. Close to a lob, but just short of the lob line. 
Dennis Noel handling the line for us again this week. Trying to corral the four horsemen. Oh, mm. just missed that head pin. Right on it for the 10. Three, four, and seven this time. Just missing the object. And we're going to have to have Dennis go down and check that piece of wood. <laughs> Dennis is very intense on the lob line. He hardly <laughs> takes his eyes off it. <laughs> we had to yell and scream at Dennis, check that. I think we woke him up. <laughs> I, I think that might be out of play. We'll see. Yep, it is. That'll give Jackie a clear shot. Dennis does a fine job on that lob line. Tough job. Many times it's nice out. Many times it's like calling a base runner out or safe. The call has got to be made immediately, and it's not easy. He does a good job out there. Not only that, but uh, combat pay sometimes for going down there <laughs> in where the ball return is. <laughs> never know what might happen. Eight fill for Pat Kerr and a chance for another spare. And the team could use two or three in a row. Yeah. Slipping by. Pat is one of those bulls that are in the extreme, but it's to the left side of the approach, not the right side. She stands right next to the ball return on the left hand lane, a uh, right hand lane. Interesting too, as you can see there, she holds a towel in her left hand. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good looking ball there. Oh. Not too much to show for. Three, six, four, and seven. See bowlers once in a while that will hold a ball in their off hand, but I don't know if I've ever seen one uh, hold a towel in the other hand. It used to be a lot of bowlers used to hold the ball in the other hand, but many of them got, got away from that now. One of the greats, in fact, his daughter's coming on next week. Tony Baldinelli used to hold two balls, one in each hand before, as he delivered. And Pat will get out of that with a nine box. Steve Vatnay now. Steve has two marks to his credit, six for the team, and he'll shoot at the one three ten. No wood. Too heavy on the head pin. We talked last week about how high the scores were down in the men's roll-off. I'd have to go back and check it, but Clarence Davis came in sixth in the men's roll-off with a 659, and I think that's been good enough to win several roll-offs that we've had. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. The scores were relatively high for this, for the men's side of this roll-off. That piece of wood is going to roll off to the gutter, I believe. Yep. That'll save Dennis a trip. And Steve Vadney will now look at the 8-9-10 with plenty of wood. This could go. Nope. It's 10. So the marks are a little tougher to come by here in the middle string. And Pat Pay and Pat Kerr with a chance right here with the two open frames for Steve to uh, make up some ground. And Pat buries it, leaving the four pin. Can't remember exactly which match it was when he had his streak of 400 just recently, but it looked like he wasn't doing anything and all of a sudden he threw the triple strike and really changed the complexion of the match and just threw his hands up there. He knew as soon as he threw it, missed the four pin for the spare and so easy on the
Pat now in lane 31, and he's got another nine pin drop, and wow. That really is 18 pins right there, because if he had had the spare, that's nine on the fill and another nine drop, so that's really costly. Picks this one up, though. Seems like so many times that happens. If I miss an easy spare, I keep saying to myself, well, watch this. It's going to be eight or nine <laughs> on the next ball. <laughs> to really make you feel bad about missing the easy spare. Dan, we've talked the last couple of weeks about this format and the unusual uh, pressures that it brings because of the fact that you're sitting a lot of the time rather than bowling. There's one other element, too, that I think is important to mention, and that is the fact that where it's a team competition, there's that element of kind of feeling like you're letting down your teammate if you don't fill a spare properly right. or fill a mark properly and so on. That, that's a tough thing to, uh, to get over, too. I, do, I bowl a lot in doubles and teams and stuff. There's always one or two of us, you know, figures let the other one down. But I guess the good team is the one that says, hey, could happen to me, could happen to you. And hopefully it won't, and you both go together. But it doesn't always happen. Nine drop for Jackie Sterner, the eight pin. Got to come back for just enough. Jackie will fill her own mark here. That's her fifth of the day, the seventh for the team. And this is the only situation where a bowler will fill his own, his or her own mark. It's in the last frame. And fills it with a six for a 114. Now Pat Kerr is working on a spare. Three pocket leaves itself to diamond. Two, four, five, and eight. Mm, just sliding left. Pat's looking for her first mark of the day, and if she were to get it over here in the tenth frame, she would just about even up this second string. And of course, the team of Pat Pay and Pat Kerr were trailing by 26 coming into this second game. To the right. A little off balance that time when she released the ball at the foul line. So Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner will again have a pretty sizable lead going into the third and final string. As the totals go up on the board, it will be 239 for Sterner and Vadney, 203 for Pay and Kerr. We'll be back with the third and deciding string right after these messages. Pat Pay will start things off here in the third string. He and his teammate Pat Kerr trailing by 36 pins. And uh, they're in no different condition than their two predecessors, two teams that came before them. Steve and uh, Jackie have been putting the pressure on. That's the way to start it. You're going to come from behind. Just a little full, almost hit that one three pocket. Leaves himself a two, four, six, and ten. Oh, nice try. That was very close. When he first let it go, I th really thought he had a chance to clip that two pin. Steve Vadney has two marks on the day. Well, that time you probably saw it, the head pin flew right up and over. And instead of kicking out two or three of those pins in that cluster, it only took out the nine pin. Hmm. Pull it out the three, five, and six, but left the ten. And so lose six pins to their lead, of their lead, I should say. Making it 30. 
Thanks, Doug. Let's try some track. That can get <laughs> <laughs> I had the right shoe off, but <laughs> I needed the left one. Three and six for Mark. Oh. Mm. Picked out the front one. Steve doesn't miss many like that. No, well, in that one you say, well, you, the object pin was the three, and that's what you want to hit. And fortunately, it's just a little too full. Steve opens with a pair of tens. Pat Kerr now. That would look nothing else to put a couple marks up there for her partner, Pat Pay. Nope. One, two, and ten. It'll go, certainly. A little piece of wood sliding in to help out. Target with that one. For the spare, and it won't go. Wow. Six pin. Couple of nines. Pat leaving the door open for Jackie Sterner. Let's see. It's going to be the three, five, six, and ten with wood. And with a moving six pin. <laughs> and it's still moving <laughs> and still standing. pin was tapped, but it won't go over. Now, tapped and tipped and still standing. <laughs> and now that wood's going to be a problem, perhaps. We'll see. It's got a couple pieces there, so. Always unpredictable when it's pointing at you like that. I think that the second piece actually helped her a little bit there. And that is Jackie's sixth mark of this match, and it comes in the fourth box, giving the team of Sterner and Vadne 30 with a mark up. Pat Pay and Pat Kerr with some catching up to do. We'll see if they can catch fire in time when we return on Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. Pat Pay. Pat co-holds a couple of records here on Stars and Strikes. Four strikes in one string, and seven strikes in a match. Several people have done both of those things. Uh, oh, he tried to split the three and the six, and the wood would have helped him with the seven, but... And he'll wait for that wood to slide over. It may help him. It'll be a nine box. Pat has rolled five 400 triples in his nine previous appearances. And there's a big strike. That's one of the reasons why he's done that. <laughs> one three pocket and no way the pins are going to stand up this time. His second strike of the day. Now Steve Vadney working on Jackie Sterner's spare and he goes right through the middle for just four. Very interesting if Pat Kerr gets up and throws another strike. Change the complexion of this match in a hurry. Nice try by Steve Vadney.
Steve waiting for a piece of wood, and now it's going to turn right where he didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> and all that waiting for nothing. <laughs> and that's yeah. what happens. So an eight box, and it's all even here in the third string through five, but remember, Sterner and Vadnay came in with a 36 pin lead. Now Steve is opposite that strike. And almost has one of his own. You running in the uh, in the Boston Marathon tomorrow, Dan? Well, I've been training, Doug, and uh, I don't know if I'm quite up to that distance yet. I'm only yeah. up to about uh, you know 20 miles, and <laughs> it takes me about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's because my car doesn't run that fast. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, ran 10 miles a day for two weeks and then found you were 140 miles from home, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat Kerr filling the strike with a seven. Again, that is the problem right now is the head pin is should go down that first ball and having a tough time missing it and then it becomes the object pin and miss it again. Uh, can't get any momentum that way. That was a good looking ball by Pat Kerr. There's the one she's been looking for. The 6-10. A little help from the wood. Oops, mm. just sliding by to the left. That'll do it for Pat Kerr on the day. Making her first appearance with us. And now Jackie Sterner for her final two. She's working on a mark. Beautiful oh. pocket hit. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> I guess that describes it. A wow out of both of us. <laughs> Here we see the replay and I'll say it again. Wow. <laughs> Looking for two. Shoot at the 6-7 this time. Stoneham Cooperative Bank certainly does well with Jackie Sterner as a participant on the show and spokesman for the bank, I will say. <laughs> at least on the lane she is. She's doing herself proud, doing very, very well. I gotta ask her if they gave her that week off. <laughs> She picks this one up. No, we won't even mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie's done it again, though. She's bowled 14 boxes and has seven marks, just like two weeks ago. Well, you mentioned that 400 triple is pretty tough in this type of format. Goes seven again, and Steve Vadney catches fire. They'll go they'll the 400. Now they're still taking turns. Yeah. Pat Pay now. It's got to be strikes to have any chance at all. Five, six, nine, ten. Piece of wood next to the five. I think he'll try to play. I don't know if it's back too far or not, but now he's going to play the outside one, the front one. Mm. Well, next week, what we've got here, Clarence Davis and Tony Marie Baldinelli. And they've both won ladder championships here on Stars and Strikes. I take that back. Clarence Davis lost his ladder championship match, but to Tom Surrett, but he did throw a 395 in the match. Oh boy, that's sliding by, but Again, Steve Vadney. Jackie Sterner will be victorious. It'll be three in a row for him. Steve Vadney for his final two. And a spare. He'll be up over 350 again. Outside, one, two, and ten. Or one, three, and ten. Just gonna finish with a flurry here. 
five and ten, and the wood just turned nicely. If he's on the five, it should be no problem. Jackie Sterner has earned herself the privilege of rolling our bonus ball again this week. As Steve has his fifth mark there, but Jackie has seven. And two weeks ago it was a 379 for this team. Last week a 350. And this week it'll be a 373 with a 134 final string for the team of Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner. Handshakes all around and there's the story. Another win, three in a row for Sterner and Vadney, this time over Kerr and Pay. We'll be back to talk to all the bowlers and go for $40 in the bonus ball contest right after we take these messages. Don't go away. All right, we're back here at Sandy's, and uh, they've made it three in a row. Uh, the competition, of course, gets tougher. It, uh, it's tougher to string those wins together after you get two or three, but we'll see if they can continue. Uh, Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner still alternating and getting the job done. Yeah, balling really well as a team, too. Every other week, it seems the other one gets more marks than, than their partner, but they seem to work well together, and they seem a lot more relaxed the last couple weeks, too. Next week, another match, you never know, but uh, they're tough right now. We talked briefly during the show about the fact that uh, when you're bowling with a partner like this, I imagine it's kind of like doubles in tennis. You have to feel like you really have to kind of carry your share of the load. Well, you really want to feel like you're contributing to the mm -hmm. team. Um, I guess you get to get to that point where uh, both of you realize that one can have the off day. I hope it doesn't happen, but uh, if, if you get that added pressure for you, you don't want to let the other person down. Uh, there's enough pressure throwing that ball 60 feet trying to hit those pins rather than worry about your partner. All right, let's uh, talk to all the bowlers here and give away some money. First of all, let's bring up Pat Pay and Pat Kerr, our runners-up. Uh, of course, they came in as the number three seeds, and uh, they were guaranteed uh, to split $125 uh, in cash, and that's what's going to happen. We'll give away all the prizes here first. Pat, first for you, the check and uh, the runner-up plaque from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden, Mass. And Pat, pay your share also. And uh, I know you would have liked the things to turn out a little better, but uh, your first appearance, and uh, we're happy to have had you here. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Maybe I can make it again. All right. We hope to see you again, Pat. And Thanks. Pat, uh, you've been here many times before, and uh, it's it's tougher bowling this format than it is the other one, I know. But uh, but you had some marks, uh, just not enough breaks when you needed them. Wow. Well, in this type of bowling, you've got to hit together. And we just weren't there today, that's all. Well, we appreciate you both being here. A good match, and uh, enjoy uh, enjoyed having you. We hope to see you both again real soon. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Pat Pay and Pat Kerr are our runners-up. And now... Uh, if Dan Murphy can lift the box one more time, we will uh, see if we can give away some money here on the uh, bonus ball. Jackie Sterner on lane 31. <laughs> and let's wait. It'll be six. And Steve and Jackie come on over here for a second and see if we can't get a match. It is not a match for Edgar Barron. Edgar's guess was seven. Edgar from Suncook, New Hampshire. So Edgar will re be receiving a TV50 NHCBA desk pen in the mail, and the jackpot will go up to $50 next week, and you guys will be back next week. Nice job once again. Thank you. Right, now, are you planning this in advance? So you say, well, okay, I'll take it this week, and then you can take <laughs> oh, it the yeah. next week. That's, that's the way it works. <laughs> Steve, uh, you both, uh, once again, uh, I think the key has been all three weeks, we've mentioned this before, you, you've gotten off to a good start. You get a lead in that first string. Yeah, that's a big thing. You know, it takes a little pressure off you and puts it on in the other team. And uh, she's doing a great job. And <laughs> if I can uh, shoot, can we change the format, though? When I get a nine-pin drop, can she come up and shoot? <laughs> we'll have to talk it over with the, with the lawyers uh, and see if they agree with, the, with that. But uh, we will have you back next week, of course. Uh, Tony Marie Baldinelli and Clarence Davis will be the opponents next week. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough. <laughs> it is. Uh, Tony, in fact, Tony Marie and, and Clarence have both been here before. Uh, they've both done very, very well, and uh, I expect that's going to be a tough one. Should be a good match. All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Thank Congratulations you. once again. Steve Vadney and Jackie Sterner, they've made it three in a row. And uh, once again, the final score for this week's match, 373 to 310. And that sets it up for next week. Uh, Clarence Davis and Tony Marie Baldinelli are seated second coming in, and they'll take their shot. That's sure. Um, Tony Marie, of course, she's been around the, the lane since she was knee-high to a mm -hmm. bowling ball, I guess. <laughs> and, and Clarence uh, has been on. He's done very well in the show himself. So uh, it's going to be a tough team, and it gets tougher as it goes along. All right, well, we will be back next week for the uh, semifinal match of the Stoneham Cooperative Bank Mixed Doubles Championship. Of course, Sunday at 12 noon, Saturday at 5 o'clock right here on TV50. For Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew, Doug Brown saying so long from Sandy's.